Our first guest will be at the uh, Club Casino in New Hampshire on uh, September 17th. He is a veteran. Huh? What? 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 Okay. You want to do the whole segment back there? <laughs> okay, you're coming out. Just get ready. Wait a minute. Let me finish this. Our first guest will be at the Club Casino in uh, New Hampshire on August 17th. He is a veteran actor and a very funny comedian and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a world-class skier. Please welcome <laughs> Buddy Hackett. Here he is. Thank you. You look great. You look like you're terrific. Yeah, I, I haven't am. seen you in like five years. You here on the show? I came to visit you one afternoon, if you recall. Yeah, I do recall that. But yeah, you, you were, were on the show. You were wearing uh... sneakers. I was what? You were wearing sneakers. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm shoes. wearing them again tonight. Oh. Yeah, there they are. Same pair? No. But anyway, you look terrific. It looks to me like you haven't gotten a day older. You must take good care of yourself. Do you I act... do. I do. I do a lot of exercise. Yeah. Do you actually ski? Oh, yeah, I'm some skier. Are you really a good skier? Yeah, my legs are as hot as this table. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll take your word for it. You don't want to... <laughs> you can feel them. No, I don't want to feel them. <laughs> Everyone knows we're straight. <laughs> well, that's right, but still and all, I'm not all that crazy about feeling your legs, if you don't mind. <laughs> anyway, so you live... You live I'm not uh... going to talk to you. Johnny always feels my legs. <laughs> Sometimes, if I have a hot night, I get a kiss goodnight. Too. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Well, he, he spent too much time with Ed, I think, is the problem. <laughs> now, now, buddy, it, it, to me, you don't look like the guy who might be skiing for recreation or fun or, or even exercise. When did you start skiing and where do you do it now? I live in Aspen, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I started skiing at Grossinger's Hotel in 1945. Mm -hmm. I come out of the Army and I went up there to get a job. And I was taking care of the skate rentals and helping people lace on their mm -hmm. skates and take them on hikes. And there was a guy, Siegel Baum, and he said, you, you want to learn to ski? You would like to ski? <laughs> Do you wish to ski? <laughs> I said, listen, you Nazi. I just come, come out of World War II. I was in Ark in Germany. Don't be telling me about yeah. Jew learn to ski. <laughs> You learn to die? Yeah, well. <laughs> so anyway, you know, then he, he just talked that way. Yeah. I know. Uh, wasn't really a Nazi then, is what you're saying. No, no, just what? talked that way. I knew that he really was a uh, Nazi because I seen he had blinces in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm glad you give me a plug for that club casino because every year, every two years I worked there. Uh-huh. Nice every, place, big, big resort area? Well, it's a beautiful beach, Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Uh -huh. And all young people, that's why I come on here to plug it, because it's got all youngsters like you got. Uh -huh. It's not oldsters. You know how old I am? No, how old are you? 66. Wow. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I have a card. If you show this card in the subway, they give you a ticket to come back free. Really? Yeah. But they can't guarantee that you'll live down there. <laughs> you know, you really, you really don't look 66. Uh, well, I'm not 66 yet. I got another nine days. Oh, well, that would be the difference, yes, yeah. That's, that's what right. threw me off. <laughs> well, you got a keen eye. <laughs> anyway, I have some good jokes to tell you if you want to, uh, you could talk some more. We're not doing so bad just this way. What, I mean. what do you want to do? You want to tell jokes? I like to All tell All right, just jokes. tell some jokes. Go ahead. You pick the topic and then tell the joke. Announce the topic, do the joke. Uh, well, announce what topic? Of the topic of the joke. And now a joke about... Well, most of the time I don't call it a joke. I call it a story. This way you're covered in case it don't go oh, over. Right. It's yeah. only a story. <laughs> yeah. The pressure I, is I, not I there. One of the smart things to do. All right, tell us a story. Well, this guy is in a doctor's office, and he's getting... Uh, <laughs> he's getting examined, see? Yeah. Two-hour examination. Wow. Doctor system, I have to talk to your wife. He says, she's in the waiting room. She been there two hours. No, no, he says, I told her it'd be a while. She must have come in 10, 15 minutes ago. He goes out, the doctor says to the wife, listen, that husband's a workaholic. Mm. He works too much. 
<laughs> I talked to him. There's nothing. I, I can't help him. You could help him. This man needs three home-cooked meals a day. I know you can't do that, but you could get up a half hour, 45 minutes early, make him a nice breakfast. Have his dinner waiting when he comes home. Once in a while, you pack him with something, take with him so he don't eat crap. Crap, he's eating crap. Now, so that'll take care of the f physiological, but the psychological, relieve the pressure. Get the pressure. <laughs> you gotta make sure he has sex with you three, four times a week. Wow. And even he don't want to. Lure him, <laughs> torment him, little cleaveroo. Yeah. <laughs> and get him into that bed for sex. Three, four times a week, you got it? Three home-cooked meals a day, sex three, four times a week. She says, thank you. They go home and the husband said, what did the doctor say? She says, you're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing we can do for you. <laughs> okay, we have... Yeah, and then Saturday night, that's Friday night. Mm -hmm. Friday Saturday night. night I'm at the Concord, and Sunday night I'm in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Now, I, I can recall, it seemed like a couple of years ago, you said you were going to take it easy and maybe even slow things down and not work as much. But here, work. you're working all the time now. No, just, just these three nights. I, the last time I worked was uh, Atlantic City, 4th of July week. Uh -huh. And uh, before that, three, four months or something. You just go out when you feel like doing something fun. It depends when my manager calls. Right. And if he catches me right, like if he would catch me after I empty this cup, <laughs> I'll work Mars. Well, well yeah. it's a little rocket fuel yeah, then, is so, what you're saying. Yeah. Do you do you remember the first time now? Now, uh, when when you started doing uh, clubs and stuff, yeah. uh, and and uh, did you did you always have uh, uh, off-color material? Is that the stuff you started with? Do well, you remember the first time you told like a, a dirty joke or what then would be yeah, considered? Yeah, yeah, but uh, the f but. In the beginning, I was spotless. I didn't even say hell or damn on mm -hmm. stage. Yeah, one... You probably couldn't in those days, right? Well, in the beginning, but after a while, when you once you're filling a room, you say what you want. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you park your car on a lawn, you do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but the minute you stop doing business, they sell the car or yeah. they burn it with you in it. Yeah. That's, you know, <laughs> I work for some rough people. So anyway, I work them for Boozy in Chicago, <laughs> and I tell him a joke. He says, tell that out there on the floor. So I said, I, I can't tell her. He says, it's not a suggestion. Oh. Now, what year are we talking about? 61. When this, 61. Okay. So the first joke I told him, <laughs> oh, you don't get nervous like John. He gets so nervous <laughs> when I'm going to. Well, the first one I, I said, I was in the Army, and uh, we had a colonel named Fat Ass Johnson. Are you allowed to say that? <laughs> I mean, nobody called him that. They called him Colonel Johnson, sir. But when you come home from a 10-mile hike and you got blisters, you know, Fat Ass Johnson. <laughs> now I'm working a motor pool, you know, where they keep all the cars in it. Uh -huh. And I'm cleaning some, and the phone rings. And it says, recruits do not answer phone. Right. Well, I had to have something from home. I, Hello, and the voice says, soldier, what vehicles have we got available? I said, six trucks, seven Jeeps, an M8 armored car, a half track, and Fat Ass Johnson's command car. <laughs> and the guy says, soldier, have you any idea who you're talking to? I said, no. He said, this is Colonel Johnson. I said, oh, Colonel, have you any idea who you're talking to? He said, no. I said, bye-bye, Fat Ass. <laughs> sure. Now, the road in the paper. <laughs> You're gonna laugh if you want to hear history. Yeah, no, let's hear a little history then. So now they wrote in the paper that I do ask jokes. And, but they did a three <laughs> they, letter. They write this no, in the no. paper? Three letter. Earl Wilson made a crusade. Yeah. You know, I don't think midgets should attack people. So, <laughs> and then his son wrote a, a thing, the dirtiest show on Broadway. Did you know yeah, that? Yeah, I do remember that. This yeah. was in the days of uh, old Calcutta and like that. And this yeah, was. But they, that yeah, was much know, later. Know, but yeah. in the beginning, Earl got on me. So now I said, he does three three dashes yeah. word yeah. jokes. That's so not, you're labeled on the basis of that one joke. Yeah, but that's not an ass joke. An ass joke is the blind guy crossing the street. Mm. You know that story? Mm. Oh. And he's got a dog. Oh. You want a tablet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he's got a dog. And he crosses the street, and the guy says to him, Sir, that dog nearly got you killed. Cars were almost hitting you. 
He said, really? And he took a dog biscuit out of his pocket. And the guy says, you nearly got killed that dog and you're gonna feed him? He said, no, I just want to find out where his head is so I can kick him in his ass. <laughs> Yes. There. Yes. That's more of it. Yeah, that's your traditional ass joke. Right, right. Well. Another one. Oh, you want another one? No, we gotta go here. One more. All right, one more. Well, don't one tell more. me you gotta go. All right, well, I no, could stay. Him. A... Here, yell at this guy. I could stay a few days. And then when you're done yelling at him, yell at that guy over there. Oh, I'll fight him. Yeah. Okay, so this guy takes a girl in a cemetery to make love. Right. It's an old cemetery, a colonial cemetery, <laughs> with a flat tombstone. Uh -huh. And on this flat tombstone, they indulge themselves. Uh -huh. Next day, she has a backache. He <laughs> took it to the doctor. Doctor said, would you disrobe? That's all right. Yeah, David. disrobe. So sure. she disrobed. Yeah. He's a doctor. Yeah. Yes. And she disrobed. He said, turn about. She turned about. He said, how old are you? She said, 28. Why? He said, says on your ass you died in 1784. <laughs>